The reason your renders are boring is because they're not cinematic, but most people have no idea what cinematic actually means. It's actually pretty simple. The art of cinema is the art of the motion picture. So if you wanna make your renders more cinematic, you need to add movement into your images. So in this video, I'm gonna give you four easy methods to add movement into your Unreal 5 renders that I learned from using Unreal Engine on set and making my own animated film. Starting with tip number one, adding in stock footage. The best way to add movement is to add movies into your 3D scene, and there's nothing more realistic than real life footage. I love creating stock footage that loops forever, so anywhere we go in our environment, we can see that motion in real time, and it's like making a film on a real film set. So if you want to create fire animations that loop forever, you can use paper flipbooks. Just make sure in your plugins menu that you have the paper 2D plugin enabled. Now to make a paper flipbook, all we need to do is import each frame from our fire footage. And this is really easy to prepare. So inside of Premiere, let's create a new composition. And then all I'm gonna do is set my frame size to 512 by 512 and change our time base or our frame rate over to 24 frames per second. Then we just need to export this as a PNG sequence. But I'm gonna do one thing before we do that. Right now this footage is 20 seconds long and this can overload your machine pretty quickly. So instead, let's create a small section of our fire footage and then we can delete before and after. And let's create a looping animation by alt clicking and dragging the same clip before and after. And then I'll select all of these and use the shift D hotkey, which will crossfade at the beginning and ending of each clip. Now what this does, if I have loop playback enabled, is if I just render out this middle clip with the beginning and ending cross dissolved, when I play this back, you'll see that this fire perfectly loops and you can't see where the fire starts and where it ends. And if you want to adjust this further, you can just click all three clips and slide them before and after to find the perfect moment to loop your footage. So once you have your clip looping correctly, just go to export and we'll change our format over to a PNG sequence. And just make sure you have an underscore as the last character in your file name and then press export. Then all you need to do is press control A to select all your files and drag them into your content browser. Now all of our images will come in as a texture, but we need to convert these into a flipbook. So all we need to do is shift click over all of our textures and then under sprite actions, we'll just press on create sprite. This will create a duplicate of our textures, but now we have this new sprite with this cyan color. From here, just shift click to select all of our sprites and then we can right click here and create a new flipbook. And then just open this up and now you'll see our flipbook in motion. Now, one thing you might need to do is under your default material, scroll down and under the material property overrides, set the blend mode to additive. And this will punch out the black background of your stock footage and replace it with transparency. Then just take your flipbook right here in the content browser and add it into your scene. And now we have this animated fire that we can move anywhere inside of our scene. And that could be behind any actor or super close to the foreground. Pretty cool. Plus you can make duplicates and copy these around. Now, if you duplicate enough of these, you will start to notice that they're perfect clones of one another. So a good tip here is that you can slightly vary the play rate by changing this from a value of one to 1.02 and the other ones to 1.04. And then they won't be carbon copies of one another. Plus, it's always a great idea to add depth by placing multiple versions in the foreground, midground, and background. By the way, if you want more shortcuts and templates to learn Unreal faster than ever, then you should check out my course, Unreal Fundamentals. I'll take you from a complete beginner to making your own action scenes and mastering filmmaking in Unreal 5. It's on sale right now at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals. I'll leave a link down below. Let's get back to the video. Let's move on to tip number two, adding blowing wind to our cloth. Now, believe it or not, this cloth here is not being simulated. It's actually just using a simple setup inside of the material by using the same exact cheat that video games use to add wind to their grass and trees. So how can we add this moving cloth without simulating anything? Well, let's first start out by editing the material. So I've reset this material, so we're starting with a blank slate. Now most materials start by plugging in the base color, roughness, and normal map. But let's move these out of the way for now and instead look at this new option, the world position offset. We can use this setting to offset the geometry that this material is attached to. A really easy way to visualize this is by typing in simple grass wind. And let's plug this into our world position offset and we can quickly create default settings by just right clicking and promoting each of these to a new parameter for the wind weight, wind intensity, and the wind speed. Let's set our wind intensity and our wind weight to a value of 0.5 and our wind speed to a value of one. Then just make sure to save or hit apply and you should see that our tent immediately starts to be animated right here in our viewport. And this is the simplest way to add this movement onto any object. 
But one thing that you will start to notice is that the cloth is intersecting with the wood frame underneath our tent. So to fix this, let's create a vertex color node. And then I'm gonna press the L key and click in the material graph to create a lerp node. And we'll set our B value to zero. And we'll, let's plug the red vertex color into the alpha. Finally, let's plug the result of this into our world position offset input. Now let's press save and nothing's gonna update just yet, but this will allow us to select different parts of our mesh and stop it from blowing in the wind. Now this is really cool. On the top left, let's switch from selection mode over to mesh paint mode. Now on the top left, you can see that we're in vertex color mode, which means anything that we paint in the vertex color will be passed on into the vertex color of our material. So I'm gonna set my fall off to 0.5 and then what we can do is paint on the very top of our mesh. And you can see right away that this is stopped simulating right on the edge here. If I wanna visualize what's going on here, let's change our color view over to the red channel. And I can see exactly where I've painted on the mesh. How this works is everything that's red is going to turn to a value of zero and anything that's not red will have the original wind that we created. And so now I could paint on this object or any object in our 3D scene and customize the amount of wind. This is great for some of these more complex structures because all we need to do is turn on our red channel and then we can paint around any areas that are occluding or have any errors. And you'll notice this door is half red or half transparent, which you can do by changing your paint color down to a value of 0.4 or 0.5. Then when you paint on top of the mesh here, it'll reduce the overall movement, but it won't turn it off. I could increase this and continue to paint to reduce it even further. And what's great about this is it's all in real time and interacting through the camera lens. Because you can then continue adding decals onto your object. This bird mark is just a set of decals. So I can slide and adjust this and it'll react to the wind. The next tip to add movement into our image is to add blowing dust and wind. Now there's two ways to do this. One is with Niagara particle systems, which I have a separate video detailing how to make this custom smoke animation from scratch. But I wanna show you an easier way to art direct your frame so you can add movement and increase the depth so you can art direct your smoke and blowing wind. Let's start out by creating a brand new material and I'll call this a smoke card. Now to build this, I'm gonna access some more hidden textures inside of Unreal. So to preview this, in your content browser, click on the settings and make sure that show engine content is enabled. When this is enabled, you can go above your content folder into this all folder, and now you can search for anything inside of Unreal Engine. So let's double click on the engine folder and let's type in smoke. And if you scroll down, you should find this T-soft smoke texture. So let's drag this into our material graph. Now what's great about this texture is it's a tileable texture, meaning that there's no seams or edges, which will come in handy later. So to quickly preview this, I'm gonna plug this into the base color, and then I'm gonna show you a new node that you can use to animate your textures, which is the panner node. Let's plug this into the UV input of our texture sample, and let's set our X speed to negative 0.25. And right here with this preview, you can see that this smoke texture tiles left and right infinitely, which is great. Let's modify this a little bit further so we can drag and drop these different smoke cards all over our scene. Let's build a customized speed control by creating two scalar parameters by pressing S and clicking in our material graph. I'm gonna call this speed X and then I'm gonna make a copy and call this one speed Y. Then let's drag off of speed X and create an append vector node, which means we can create two different parameters just like we're seeing here with the speed graph and we can plug them in right here. And let's set that speed X value back to negative 0.25 and press save. Now let's take this material and apply it to a plane in our 3D scene. So go to your quick add actors menu and let's add in a plane shape. And we can move this up and aim it towards the camera. And let's scale this up so we can preview it right here in the scene. And then just click on your smoke guard texture and drag it right on top of that plane. So here we can rotate it so it's oriented correctly. And now let's continue to adjust and modify this. The obvious issue is that we don't want this to be a thick, opaque block. So let's change our blending mode over to translucent. And this will change how our material is set up and give us this opacity input. So let's press the S key and click down to create a new scalar parameter. And let's call this opacity. Now I'll include a link for this down below, but I imported this simple texture of a black and white mask, which we can use to keep the center of our image opaque and keep the edges of our image transparent. So let's drag in our square mask and then let's multiply this by that opacity parameter. 
Now when you press save, you'll see that we have soft, transparent edges. And we could reduce our opacity down to 0.5 or 0.75 to find a good balance. Now our smoke material is pretty much done, but you'll notice that when I slide it into the ground that we get a hard edge. And obviously this is not how smoke would look in real life. So let's add one more node called a depth fade node. And let's plug this into our opacity and then right click on the fade distance and let's promote this to a new parameter. And we can set this to a value of 150. Now when I press save, if you look at the seam, it'll instantly go away because Unreal is smart enough now to fade our plane by 150 units through anything it's intersecting. Lastly, we can get some weird colors as this goes in and out of the different parts of our image. Now to make this look a little bit better, one thing I'm also gonna do is let's create one more multiply node right here. And instead of plugging our smoke material into the base color, let's take our smoke texture and multiply it by our mask. And instead for our base color, let's create a vector parameter and plug this into the base color instead. And we can set this to a value of 0.7. This will update our smoke so that it never goes too dark and it'll also interact with any lights that are in your scene. So from here, we can stretch this out and again, add some elements into the foreground, midground, and background. And now we can populate these throughout our 3D scene. Now the way I like to set this up is we can right click on a material and create a new material instance. We'll call this MI Smoke Card 1. And let's apply our material instance over here. With our material instance, we can customize each one of these controls, like the color, opacity, and speed. This way, we can have some smoke cards really close to camera and add some further into the background. So we could create a smaller one closer to the campfire by creating a new material instance and just duplicating that with hotkey control D. And let's assign this material over here. And then we can scale this down just a bit and let's reduce the opacity because it's a little bit too in your face at the moment. And what's so cool is you can drag this left and right until you find the right balance. And I could also rotate this to give it a little bit of breakup and look slightly different than the rest of these. And there we go. Now we have even more blowing dust and wind. And at this point, we're getting so much animation and movement. Now to take this to the next level, the one thing we haven't discussed are these flickering lights for our campfire, which adds this extra layer of intensity and movement. Now there's two quick ways to do this. The first is we can drag in any light and whenever I'm imitating fire, I always like to change the color mode to use temperature. And we can set this down to a value of 2500, which will give this rich orange color. Then you can just delete any keyframes and instead right click on the intensity detail right here. And let's override this with a float Perlin noise. If you look up close, you'll see this new curve that's creating random values throughout our timeline. To adjust this, we can right click and then find our Perlin noise channels and increase the amplitude, which is the total value that will go up and down in our intensity. So right now I'll set this to a value of four, but you'll notice that the intensity is going into negative values, which is not what we want. So to fix this, we can also create a new additive track on top of this, and we can offset our intensity by a value of positive four. And now we get all the randomness of that curve without getting any negative values in our intensity. And from there, you just continue adjusting the position until you're happy with your result. You can also change the color of these smoke cards so you get interactive light from the fire itself. I added some additional smoke cards back here, which are colored orange. And even though they might not look great on their own, when you add them behind some fire elements, they start to combine and feel like combustible smoke coming right from these flames. So try this out on your own projects to make your shots more cinematic. Now, if you're new to Unreal or you've struggled learning it in the past, don't worry. You should check out my Unreal Filmmaking Bootcamp, Unreal Fundamentals. I'll teach you how to build your own film sets, animate your own characters, and make your own action scenes in just 30 minutes a day. Plus, you'll get all of my templates, cheat sheets, and project files that I use on my own freelance projects, all designed to make Unreal easy so you can focus on the fun, creative filmmaking side of Unreal 5. Just go to unrealforvfx.com fundamentals or click the link in the description below. Otherwise, press subscribe for more in-depth Unreal 5 guides and breakdowns just like this, and click the video here to see how I made a Nintendo Switch commercial in just 24 hours. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.